All right, let's get to the great state of Maine now, where our Stephanie Ramos is monitoring a crucial Senate race there. Republican incumbent Susan Collins, someone who has gotten a lot of attention on the national stage, facing a tough Democratic challenger in Sarah Gideon. Stephanie, what's the state of the race there? Hey there, Kira. Well, the race here in Maine, the Senate race is tight. Right now, this Senate race could end Republican Senator Susan Collins' 24-year career in the Senate, but it could also launch Democrat Sarah Gideon's career in Washington. And you're going to see here in just a few seconds the campaign bus for Susan Collins pulling up. They're positioning it perfectly behind us. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, both women have... They've, they've, there it is. Yeah. Both women have gone back and forth on some really major issues the last few weeks at their debates uh, from the coronavirus to health care, criminal justice uh, reform, racism, and even how each have funded their individual campaigns. But aside from those major issues, what Senator Susan Collins has been asked repeatedly over the last couple of weeks is whether she will vote for President Donald Trump's reelection. She has dodged it every time, insisting that she just doesn't want to get involved in the presidential campaign. But her vote for President Trump's Supreme Court pick, Brett Kavanaugh, in 2018, her vote has followed her to her own reelection. Speaking with voters here across Maine, so many of them saying they were disappointed that she voted for uh, Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation. Many of them saying that that is what has swayed them toward Democrat Sarah Gideon. And we spoke with Speaker uh, Sarah Gideon. She's a Speaker of the Maine House here. We spoke with her earlier today, and she said that those votes for the Supreme Supreme Court justice weigh heavily in this election. Take a listen. First of all, in the larger context of what has happened to the judiciary over the course of these past four years, a very concerted and successful effort on behalf of President Trump to move all of the courts in the judiciary far to the ideological right. Now, the Brett Kavanaugh vote, I think, was particularly egregious for people, but also when we think about Amy Coney Barrett and Susan Collins' decision to vote against her, it was about process for Senator Collins. And in fact, we can remember that Amy Coney Barrett was one of the 181 judicial nominees that she's actually confirmed, someone who had already said that she thought the health care law was unconstitutional and that Roe versus Wade was barbaric. Now, Gideon has spent much of her day uh, crisscrossing uh, across the state of Maine, visiting polling sites and voters, saying hi to them, also speaking with volunteers before they go out to canvas neighborhoods. And Senator Susan Collins, she has spent much of her time today up north, north of the state and uh, near her hometown of Caribou. But she is expected to be here this evening. This is her campaign headquarters. So we'll see her later on tonight, Kira. Well, I'll tell you what, we might see her in a minute, uh, Stephanie. You, we just uh, heard from uh, Sarah Gideon with you. Maybe as you turn around, Susan Collins might step out of that bus and walk up to you for a live interview. So stay, stay. <laughs> no, no luck. No, we're plan we're planning for that, but she's not. She's not on the bus. The bus was parked oh, <laughs> on the shoot. other side for hours, and they just decided to move it. So, but okay. I am on the lookout for Senator Collins. <laughs> so we'll okay, keep perfect. you posted. Just, yeah, yeah. Just pull her in if you see her. Okay, let me ask you about Mainers, okay? They are known for being very yeah. independent-minded. So what are the issues mm -hmm. that are connecting most to voters right now, you think? Are there any key issues that really might decide who wins here, Stephanie? Well, what we've really heard here on the ground is health care. We've heard a lot about health care and the coronavirus. It's really the backdrop to this election. We were actually here a few weeks ago uh, covering the coronavirus here in Maine. Maine has had the lowest infection rates in the country. And what we heard from Senator, uh, excuse me, from uh, Democrat Sarah Gideon early today, she's, she said that it's just unconscionable that the Senate adjourned before a coronavirus relief bill. So she's been holding on to that. We've heard from voters. They care about that. Um, but Gideon has tried. So part of her strategy has been to tie Senator Susan Collins to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. That's been her strategy, uh, saying that th this state can't handle any more of that if they want their health care to be up to par, essentially. Now, what we have heard from Senator Susan Collins um, on that, uh, along those same lines of the coronavirus relief bill is that the senator would like uh, a second round of the Paycheck Protection program, which uh, Collins had a key role in crafting, more money for testing, aid to municipalities, uh, specifically not just states.
rates. Um, but those are the key issues that we've heard while being here on the ground um, that will really decide this election. You know, there's a lot of talk, too, about the, the system of voting. And I see here that even Collins herself today said on a radio show there might not be a winner for another week. That's right. That's right. And Senator Collins on that same uh, radio show in that same interview called the ranked choice voting system odd. And that's what will happen here uh, in Maine uh, if if neither one of the candidates receive 50 percent of the vote. So if it, it, it could be kind of confusing, uh, but this is why Senator Collins says it could it could be a while for uh, if if uh, Sarah Gideon and, and, and Senator Collins do not get at least 50 percent of the vote, that's when they switch switch to ranked choice voting. That's when it plays a part. It's the first time that that's been used here in the state in a presidential election. So under Maine's voting system, voters can rank candidates in order of preference. If no candidate gets a majority initially, that's when election officials will eliminate uh, the lowest ranked candidate and redirect their supporters based on their second preference. Those rounds continue until one of, one of the candidates have a majority of the vote. So it could take a while. I'll tell you what, Stephanie, state by state, it is hard to keep up with all the twists and turns. Thanks so much for uh, helping us uh, battle out uh, all the details as the battle for Maine continues. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.